Hello, welcome back to the second video in this series of videos on L'Hopital's Rule. My name is Nakai Rimmer, and I'm happy to help you through this calculus journey. In this video, we look at other types of indeterminate forms. In the previous video, we learned how to execute L'Hopital's Rule in the situation where you have zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So now, what if it's a different type of indeterminate form. Our first one that we're going to look at will be an indeterminate product. Our job converted into a format that we can use L'Hopital's rule on, zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So what is an indeterminate product? Well, you have two functions, one of which might be headed towards zero while the other one might be getting infinitely large. They're like at war with each other. Who's gonna win out? Someone once told you zero times anything is zero. Someone once told you if you multiply infinity by anything, it should be infinite. Well, they didn't really give you the whole story. And so here, we're gonna give you the whole story. And so, what we do is, our job should be to create a quotient. I mean, L'Hopital's rule involves a quotient. You can't do L'Hopital's rule if you don't have a quotient. A product is just a quotient in disguise. If you have multiplication, you really have division. Take two functions, f and g. That can be written as a quotient by picking one of them, and instead of multiplying by it, dividing by its reciprocal. So f times g is the same thing as f divided by the reciprocal of g. Or f times g is the same thing as g divided by the reciprocal of f. And so you have to pick which one you want to use. In the denominator as the reciprocal, you want to pick the one that's easier to take the derivative of. Which reciprocal is easier to take the derivative of? All right, let's see it in action. I'm taking x and I'm multiplying it by the tangent of 4 over x. x is headed to 0. Well, the first term, x, is going to be headed to 0. The second term, though, is the tangent of 4 over x. So 4 over something very, very small is very, very large. Oh, I'm sorry. x is going to infinity. Sorry. Redo, redo, redo. All right, let's take a look at our first example. The limit as x goes to infinity x times the tangent of 4 over x. The first term, x, headed off to infinity. 4 divided by a really large number is very small. That's inside of tangent, tangent of 0. It's 0. These two are fighting each other. One wants to get very large. The other wants to get very small. Who's going to win out? Maybe neither of them. And the actual number could be some finite limit. And so, who do you want to do the reciprocal of? Who would be easier to take the derivative um, reciprocal-wise? Uh, x is derivative, uh, x is reciprocal. Is that an easy derivative compared to tangent of 4 over x is reciprocal? you got to make that decision. And the decision that I would make would be to deal with x is reciprocal, and I don't want to deal with tangent of 4 over x is reciprocal. So instead of multiplication by x, I divide by 1 over x. It's legal. It's good algebra. And now I have my quotient. Tangent of 4 over x is still headed to 0. And the denominator is 1 over x, who is headed to 0. You're in L'Hopital ready format with one quick algebra move. OK, now we have to take the derivative. Tangent of 4 over x is derivative. Well, tangent of anything it has as its derivative secant squared of that. Okay, so we're going to start off with secant squared of 4 over x. But then we have to multiply by 4 over x's derivative. Okay, and that's negative 4 over x squared. 1 over x is derivative in the denominator. Negative 1 over x squared. This is our new limit that we're going to take as x goes to infinity. 
But first, we want to fit in not a L'Hopital step, but an algebra simplification step. So don't think that as soon as you execute L'Hopital's rule, you're ready to then go and evaluate again. Don't do it. Simplify it. Things might be a lot easier than they look. When you did the chain rule for the numerator, you had negative 4 over x squared. When you took the derivative of the denominator, you had negative 1 over x squared. Those two can interact with each other. They can cancel. Not exactly, right? But four, uh, negative 4 over x squared is, is 4 times negative 1 over x squared. They cancel to be a 4. So really, this function that you're taking the limit of is 4 times the secant of a secant of 4 over x quantity squared. <laughs> what happens to 4 over x as x gets large? goes to 0. What's the secant of 0? 1. 1 squared? 1. 1 times 4? The answer is 4. This function is headed to 4 as x goes to infinity. This is a horizontal asymptote. If you take the limit as x goes to infinity and you get a constant, then you have yourself a horizontal asymptote. And we just did our first example of an indeterminate product. So just create a fraction. All right, great. There'll be many more, okay? But let's move to a second indeterminate form. An indeterminate difference. Infinity minus infinity, air quotes. You can't treat infinity like a number. Yes, any number times it, uh, subtract itself is zero, but not a number um, that's changing and headed off to infinity, not a function that's changing like that. So there's different degrees in which you approach infinity. It could be that you have these two functions that are approach infinity at the same rate and the result ends up as a constant. And so we want to be able to execute L'Hopital's rule, but we're not ready. And so we need some algebra. And so there's not really one set way like last time with the indeterminate product. And so we just have to basically convert to a quotient. Okay. And so uh, maybe the, you have a, a term that you could factor out, a common term that you could factor out. Maybe, uh, maybe there's two fractions that you can have a common denominator that you could find and put them together. Okay. Or maybe something else. But you just need some ideas. And here's some ideas. Okay. Maybe there's a radical you could rationalize. All right. So here's our first example. Uh, X is getting large. So X times E to the, well, e, 6 over X is headed to 0 as X goes to infinity. E to the 0 is a 1. So the X E to the 6 over X, that's headed to infinity. Minus the X who's headed to infinity. This is infinity minus infinity format. Indeterminate. We don't know what that is. That's not necessarily 0. We need to create a quotient. It's going to be a little roundabout way. Let's take our first um, idea about how to execute it. Factor out a common factor. They both have an X in it for sure. Let's factor it out. What do we have now? Uh, X is headed to infinity. E to the 6 over X is headed to 1. Now we go from infinity minus infinity and we cycle into infinity times 0. An indeterminate product to which we went to want to create a quotient whose reciprocal would you rather deal with when it's time to take the derivative? X is a reciprocal or e to the 6 over x minus 1 is reciprocal? Me, I'd rather deal with x is reciprocal. So I leave the e to the 6x, uh, 6 over x minus 1 alone and I instead of multiplying by x, I divide by 1 over x. E to the 6x, e to the 6 over x minus 1 is headed to 0, and 1 over x is headed to 0 as x heads to infinity. Now and only now can I execute L'Hopital's rule. I had to cycle through so I got to the point where I could execute it. I need to have 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And now I have it. And so I take the derivative of the numerator. e to anything's derivative is, is, is e to that same thing. But then when that thing is more than just an exponent, uh, more, when the exponent is more than just an x, you have to take the derivative of that chain rule. And so the chain rule says uh, 6 over x is derivative. 
That's negative 6 over x squared. Uh, minus 1's derivative is 0. Uh, 1 over x's derivative is negative 1 over x squared. Just like in the previous example, we have negative 6 over x squared on top of negative 1 over x squared. They cancel to 6. The function is simpler than it is. Don't jump right in and try to think, oh, let me try to see what's up with L'Hopital again. No, it's simplified. Your function is just 6 e to the 6x, uh, 6 over x. And 6 over x goes to 0, e to the 0 goes to 1, the answer is 6. Okay? All right, great. Uh, let's stop right there. We'll come back with some more examples of other, there's one other type of indeterminate form we want to make sure that we do, and that is um, an indeterminate power. Okay? Thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rumor. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. And um, reach out to me if you need any, need any help. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.